I'm not doing anything now. I'm training the back. I'm just I'm coping with here. Whether it's all right or not. You should only walk where they may walk. And not too much. So, wait. I bow down in awe to see these great of people and this number of people. Turn now to see a little villager <laughs> who has spent all his life hunting and eating bones to find himself. <laughs> And find himself in the midst of these wonderful people, this warm people. This is winter. And I just told somebody I'm actually sweating. I'm actually sweating because I can't believe what I'm seeing. Uh, but I would like to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. I am here to meet you, and I am here to let you know I have carried a burden. The people on the ground at home have carried the same burden. Something happened on the 1st of October 2017. And the weight of it still weighs me down. It gives me nightmares. And today, as we were preparing for this event, I asked your brothers and sisters, can we have the ring? I asked them to give us a ring so that as a symbol, to those who have given their lives just for being who they are. It is nothing more than that. Just saying, this is who we are. And the whole military of a nation was marched into Southern Cameroon to massively kill people who had absolutely done nothing. Other than walk into a union which has turned so poisonous, which has turned so deadly, that is our only crime. And for all those who have made the supreme sacrifice, I ask for this week because we have to pay homage to them. We have to remember. If my history notes are correct, that there are wars in which you have not lost lives, but it was a war. But we are now here burying people into their thousand for no crime at all, other than that, we join people. <coughs> the time for that will come. Ladies and gentlemen, Southern Cameroonians of good fortune, shall we rise and pay homage to our dead? Being a village, as I told you, who knows nothing other than the thing that is tradition prescribes. We go to the bed on our knees. So I am going to do that symbolic gesture to honor them so that their blood does not haunt us or they do not feel that we do not give recognition to what they have sacrificed. Will you join me? Honor your dead.
And those who can stand can stand with us. We don't need you. We don't need you. The great God that made the great people of Great Britain and their great empire under a great crown is the same great God who made the vibrant but dignified peoples of southern Cameroon. We are here in London to mourn the dead. We are here in London, many would ask, why London? London because more than a century ago, this is where it all started. When the great British people, in their anxiety to see and to conquer the world, went to West Africa. Their ancestors met our ancestors. And we became one. We are here today to honor our dead. And we to say that we are we are here today to honor our dead. To say that we are on our knees in the very courtyard of Buckingham Palace. We are on our knees at the very doorsteps of the oldest parliamentary house that ever existed, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. We are on our knees right on 10 Downing Street, where one of the most influential governments in the world rules. We are here to let all of them know that there is an ongoing genocide on our people. And why are they dying? They are killed with fire, men and women in their houses. They are killed from the air, children just demonstrating. They are killed everywhere they go. And we are here today to mourn the dead and to tell the great people of Great Britain that these people are dying because they choose to speak your language. It is what you bequeath to us and we held on to it. We are here to let you know that our people are being killed day and night. Our people are being killed for no crime committed other than that they held on to a culture you left to them. The one final confirmation I want to give the world today is that in the name of all the dead, we would like the world to know that the one truism that was said by the great Kofi Atta Annan, the former Secretary General of the UN, that, and I quote, a genocide begins with the killing of one man not because of what he's done, but because of who he is." End of quote. We are here today to honor our dead and to tell the great people of Great Britain that a genocide is on. These people are killed because they choose not to abandon your culture. They choose to hold on to what they valued as your high values. They have held on to it, and they are killing them. If the French have chosen to stand on the side of our killers, where are the English for whom we are being killed because we speak your language? 
we prided ourselves that this, we call it the Queen's language. And you sit and they kill our people. So what you want is to have 500 million human scores piled into some corner of the world, as we saw in Rwanda. The violent killers from across the Mongol are going to give you soon enough. But why do we have to wait? Comment, I don't know. What why do we have to wait? What is the comment? No, I mean you. What is the comment? It's have we not buried enough? Yeah, I don't know. Have we not buried enough? Emanuela Omar said. Oh. And God, what did my people do to deserve this? What did our people do to be killed just for being who they are? And if there is nobody in the world to listen to us and stop these brutes from killing our people, can we, can we, can somebody not stop them? My brother, why should we leave what? Our people have been killed and nobody asks a question. God, 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 let somebody hear us in the world and stop these brutes from killing our people. There are people people love to the world. Somebody has to stop them. This cannot go on. This cannot go on. The pain is too much to bear. Thy faithfulness, Lord, unto 
Faith, Peace.